Welcome to another Adafruit wearables teardown. Today we're taking a look at the Lumo Lift. It's a posture sensing wearable you attach to your shirt with a magnet and it vibrates when you slouch. The companion app has some rudimentary activity tracking as well as tracking your number of hours with good posture. If you're a desk jockey like me, this can come in handy to help protect you from back pain and other posture related problems. The oval shaped wearable goes on the inside of your shirt and it's held in place with a really strong magnet. It comes with a couple different styles to go with your different outfits, including a bra clip for the ladies. This tiny device has a lot of computing power packed inside, so let's see what Lady Ada has to say about the design of the board. Okay, we're here with the Lumo Lift. Got excellent posture thanks to this lovely wearable. It's a really interesting and fun design. It's a little kind of a bean shape with a bunch of chips on the front of here, and then we have a you know, LiPo charge, rechargeable battery on the back and a little buzzer vibration motor. Becky took this apart so we can go straight and look at the chip. So let's look at the top of the circuit board first. Okay, under the microscope. So let's start over here. We've got the NRF8001. This is a classic early Bluetooth low energy chip. Uh, you know, we've carried a breakout for, uh, for this um, little chip for quite a while. It does Bluetooth low energy, so it works with Andro Android and iOS and, and basically uh, desktop computers as of Windows. 8 and Mac as well. So that's, that's a good protocol choice. This is controlled by over here, there's the actual processor. This is the EFM32 Gecko. This is a Scilabs chip. These are fun little chips. They're a good price and people who like Scilabs processors will um, dig these. On the side here, there's a little crystal for it. So this is actually what does all of the like button listening, controlling the SPI interface for the Nordic uh, NRF8001 Bluetooth chip, as well as like any data storage or, or all that other good stuff. So that processor has a programming port over here. Uh, you can see SWD, SWC. So, you know, this is a, some sort of maybe a, a Cortex ARM chip over here. That's a pretty standard programming procedure for them. Uh, reset VCC ground. So this is your little programming and uh, debugging port. Over here, we have this pretty big chip that says uh, Winbond 25032. Well, this is a pretty standard 8-pin SPI flash, the 25 series SPI, 24 series I2C. So it could be, you know, maybe there's no EEPROM or other uh, sort of storage on this chip. So you're going to use this external chip for storing data. Maybe this keeps uh, track of your slouching or, or posture history. Uh, and that's done in here. So you've got the Bluetooth that's communicating with your phone. Uh, you got a 16 megahertz crystal over here that goes with it. And then over here is our familiar favorite, the LISC 3DH, which is the triple axis accelerometer, pretty low cost, only about 50 cents, used all the time for everything, very low power, but has a very um, wide range of function from two, plus or minus 2G up to plus or minus 16G. And then over here, there's another little chip, not so sure what this is, but it's really close to this motor driver. So I'm gonna guess that this, you know, here you have M and, and M minus. This is probably a motor driver, either a, a smart processor chip that can actually do like effects, or it could be just like a straight up transistor that's just used to turn it on or off, uh, depending on how smart they wanna do the motor management inside the processor. And then over here, we have a little bit of analog stuff. It's probably voltage regulators, battery charging. There's a couple of test points for the battery um, and USB. And then here is a little tactile switch that's just made with a dome and then a piece of tape. So they just tape the dome on top. You kind of see the tape over here. And then this is what uh, listens for button presses. I also have like a teeny little LED over here. You can barely see this little shiny point. And then this is the antenna for the Nordic NRF8001. So this is your Bluetooth low energy antenna. It's interesting that they didn't decide going with, you know, what we've seen a couple times is that NRF51822, which would combine this processor and this processor, could be that this was designed earlier, or maybe the person who designed this was like, well, the combined price is about the same, and I know the EFM32 processor way more. It's all good. And then on the back, you've got these two pads. These connect to those little pogo springs that allow you to recharge the battery. And then this is the battery, which is soldered right on. It's a standard little LiPo, 80 milliamp hour. Comes from Shenzhen, Honghao Sheng Electronics. You can call them up, ask them all about it. And there's a little bit of tape that just kept this down. 
Uh, date code when this was made. Looks like this was made in the 20th week of 2015. And then the place that actually made it, Kangyu. Kangyu? Not sure exactly. And then, of course, that little buzzer motor. So that's it. It's pretty much just, you know, your, your kind of standard 32-bit processor, NRF8001 Bluetooth Low Energy, a little bit of data storage, and then, of course, the accelerometer. The accelerometer is what detects your tilt. This is going to measure how that board is affected by gravity, calibrate it, and it looks for deviations plus or minus a certain percentage or degrees from that calibrated point. I think the list 3DH even has an alert system that allows you to tell it, hey, warn me when I move more than this much deviation from my starting point. So maybe that's a, you know, a way to reduce the power. You, know, you don't have the processor sitting there constantly pulling. You actually have the accelerometer maybe alerting you. So it's a, a simple design, nice and compact, a really cute little layout. Altogether, a, a cute little posture sensor. For this and many other teardowns, we use these tools and the Adafruit USB microscope with its articulated stand. Thanks so much for watching. You can find more wearables teardowns at the playlist in the description and don't forget to subscribe.